What's up guys, Dave here. Welcome back to Studio Motors. Today we got a dope episode on the 2022 Aston Martin DBX. In this episode, we're gonna cover the design of the car and where it fits amongst its competitors. We're gonna give you a breakdown and give you our thoughts as far as who this car caters to, who should consider it, and all the positives and negatives that we could show you on the DBX. Let's go. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of automotive design. I studied automotive design when I was younger, and we can't talk about the design of the DBX or any Aston Martin without first going over Merrick Reichman. Merrick is now the chief creative officer at Aston Martin, but Merrick is responsible for some of the most iconic designs and silhouettes we've become familiar with throughout the years. Merrick has worked for Ford, has worked for BMW, has worked for Range Rover, and now is the chief creative officer at Aston Martin. Merrick is a very, very talented man, and he's got tons of experience in automotive design. Somehow he's able to bring out characteristics of a vehicle and give you that instant recognizable look. When you look at it, you know this is this. Merrick has designed some of the most iconic cars, Aston Martin DBS, Vanquish, the hypercar Vulcan that's coming out, which is incredible, it's mind blowing. The modern day Rolls Royce Phantom that you know brought Rolls Royce into the future, Merrick's the guy that designed that. As a matter of fact, he even designed some of the James Bond gadgets and cars used in the Bond movies. Extremely talented man, and now he's in charge of Aston, which gives us really cool stuff and pushes the boundaries of Aston Martin into the future with cars like the DBX. Whatever they did, the weight has been hidden quite well on the car. It's got very, very sharp response. I got no issues with this car as far as the handling goes for an SUV that's not meant to be a Lamborghini Urus. It is a turbo engine and it's a heavy car. Even though I feel like Mercedes makes some of the best turbo engines, by far the best sounding turbo engines, it still has a, that little bit of lag and a tiny bit of response time it takes before it gets to it. But as soon as it takes that big breath of air in, it just dumps it back out to your wheels in the form of torque. You feel the horsepower, I mean, you feel that it's a, it's a high horsepower car, but that torque, man. It's mapped in a way where it's meant to move weight. The car could actually tow almost 6,000 pounds. It's actually a real SUV. This is the iconic Aston grille and it's massive on the DBX and when this thing is coming at you, you immediately know it's an Aston Martin. The rest of the design and how it flows backwards from here begins with the grille and translates over to the rest of the body. So this kink you see in the grille right here, that little sharp sweep that goes upwards and makes that iconic grille, they integrated the rest of the body language to go around that. So the sides of the car, it comes in and dips inwards, downwards, swoops up with this sweeping line over here, but the middle of it is significantly higher than the sides of the vehicle. So it's got a very muscular look in the front end. With Aston Martin, everything is so customizable. I don't know of another luxury brand that lets you customize as much as Aston Martin allows you to. If you guys have never done it, jump on their configurator online. You'll be blown away with what's possible with Aston Martin. It is a car that when you build it, it truly becomes yours. most badass wheels I've ever seen on a production car. This is the new Aston Martin ribbon wheels and they have this ribbon flowing movement in them that I've never seen in any other wheel that's in production. It starts off as a five spoke, Y spoke design and then the ribbons come in. Instead of trying to hide the lug nuts, they emphasize the area around it and integrated that with the design of the wheel. So it looks like it's got a 
lot of depth to it. This wheel could be done in different colors too. So what you're seeing as like a polished aluminum and a like a charcoal color here, this could be where the ribbons are a black color and the polished area is a brass color or vice versa. It's very fluid looking design. I think it's really cool and I'm very curious where they go with this next. Most of the DBX reviews you're gonna see online are gonna be the 2021 model. That's a first year production car, okay? And it's a first year hand-built Aston Martin. I mean, they're gonna be problematic, guys. It's just how it is. The 22s, they're definitely gonna be better. It's just starting. We're just getting going now. So imagine the next iteration of this SUV. Imagine a few years down the line. I'm glad they're doing it. I'm glad they're able to do it. And Rolls-Royce has an SUV. Lamborghini made an SUV and everybody cried about it. Ferrari's got an SUV coming up. Oh my God, it's gonna be a salt mine on the Ferrari forums. It is what it is. And if you're trying to be in the money and you're a luxury automotive manufacturer, you're going to need to make an SUV. It's not some half-assed effort, it's a real SUV. It rides like an SUV, it has the visibility of an SUV. It's got the power of a sports SUV. I feel like Aston Martin hit the nail on the head. And as controversial as the design is, I think it is a great play for Aston Martin. I'm gonna put this into GT mode and feel what it's like to cruise around in it because I've been in Sport Plus. All right, that's butter, oh my God. Ooh, baby! That's butter, bro. The back of the DBX is so exciting. The design is in a league of its own, literally. They took some risks, they made some interesting angles, and I think it's paid off. Now, this isn't one of those cars where you see and you're like, oh my God, instantly as you see it. It's a car that grows on you because the design language is something we are not used to yet. It takes some time to really digest what this is, what they've done, and the beauty of what Aston Martin has achieved with the DBX. Taillight starts from here, follows through with the duck spoiler. It just follows the duck spoiler all the way through, and this is what gives it the same angle and the same appearance silhouette of the top of the Aston Martin signature grille. So very cool. This taillight typically is red. On this car, it was ordered with a clear, or you could call it smoke, but it's just a clear taillight. And this taillight being clear really brings this build together. That's the main characteristics of the back end. Now, there's a line from here, right underneath the taillight, that follows through and becomes a very prominent design point on the DBX. How they've placed everything is very cool. Everything's very well thought out. And then below this line, it swoops downwards. No openings, no vents, no creases, nothing. Now, why I'm emphasizing that is because, because this is so plain down here and there's nothing happening, it allows you to really enjoy what's going on here and the rest of it below this line, but also gives it this blank slate on the bottom that makes the back end looks very unique and very DBX, nothing but DBX. As much as we love the exterior design of the DBX, the inside is what makes it an Aston Martin, truly an Aston Martin, truly an ultra luxury SUV. There's not much else to compare it to out there. There's the Cullinan, there's the Levante from Maserati, there's the Bentayga, and then there's the Urus. It's a little bit unfair because there's nothing else to compare it to, and I feel like it's such a unique standalone vehicle. It is an ultra luxury SUV, so naturally it gets compared there. But once you're inside the vehicle, it is significantly different vibe. Aston Martin is, ultra luxury and performance all in one. This thing is between a Bentley SUV, a Bentayga, and the Urus. However, the interior is completely its own design language. The interior colors of this DBX are black damson leather and cream truffle leather. With the exterior color, that goes really well. Look at these seats. These headrests are not separate and they integrate right into the seat with a hole going through it over here. And then it follows through with nice perforations and nice stitching and some character through stitching added here. Perforations here with stitching going through it and the perforations being broken. These aluminum pieces that are integrated into the seats, wild, never seen it before. They look gorgeous. Now, what I wanna point out is this Baroque over here. So 
right here you have a yellow leather underneath the cream truffle leather that brings that creamy color out and all you see the yellow in are these dots that go around here and then around the sides that's it it's not overdone it's not over the top it's not behind all the perforations just enough to give you this really cool vibe and to show you how many layers and how many options you could build with aston martin all of this is layered and it could be done in so many different colors gorgeous interior The engine and transmission in this is the same one that's out of the Vantage, out of the DB11. It's the 4.0 twin turbo V8 from Mercedes AMG. It's got 542 horsepower, 519 pound-feet of torque. So everything's pushed up a little bit more to compensate for the weight of the car. Although this is the same exact engine that's used in the G63. It's got the Aston plaque on it, hand built in Great Britain. And the final inspection is done by Tom Phillips. Really cool. The car's assembled differently than what we're used to seeing, but that's Aston Martin. So it's a real Aston Martin SUV. We highly recommend it.